Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to Ficus Friday. Today I'll be working on my root over temple, Ficus Benjamina. I'm thinking this could be a possible show tree for the Kitchener Waterloo Bonsai Society's fall show. It would take a lot of work to kind of get the moss looking good and some moss on the temple, but I think the structures come a long way and I, I think with the pruning today I can get it back on track to become a show tree. Two months ago I took the blue scissors to the tree giving it a profile prune and then I did a lot of individual branch selection to improve the basic core structure of the tree. Today I'm going to prune it again trying to get that umbrella shaped canopy so it looks good for the show. I've got the tree on my turntable so I can begin the pruning. So up front here I've got a tall branch that kind of goes vertical off of this horizontal branch so I need to prune that back. And I've got to find a nice place to prune it back to. I think back to here so it continues to fan out. So here I go like that. That's looking better already. I'm going to prune off there's one coming off this branch and it's it's cutting to the inside of the tree so I'll remove that one like that, keeping everything fanning outwards so nothing kind of crosses the trunk line too badly. On the interior of the tree here I have this major branch on this side and I have a whole bunch of new suckers that have grown up all around it. So I don't want the ones on top so I'm going to remove those first. So here I go. Just little branches I snip off. Like that, it kind of clears that area out a bit. I've got one coming out front. It's not too bad a branch, it kind of fills in this area a bit. I might keep it for now. I've got a long shoot coming up here that's grown very vigorous and it's out of the umbrella shaped canopy profile. So I'm going to prune that back and I've just got to decide where at least to here. There's a branch fanning outwards. So I'll take it back to here. Taking that off. And I may reduce it lower later on. I've got a lot of branches on the outside here. I could reduce it. There's another one growing towards the inside here. I'll take that out. Like that. There's another one growing straight up here. I'll get rid of that one. Nothing too bad. I do have two parallel trunk lines in here. I've got one here and one beside it. So there's two trunk lines running parallel to each other. I'm not sure if I need that back one. If I got rid of it, would it look too sparse? It might. It might look too sparse in this area. So again, that might be another one I can remove after the show. Kind of keeping it nice and full, this canopy. And then giving a structural pruning later to fix that. The one growing inside here, I'll take a little one out. Yeah, so I think, you know, other than that, I think everything's looking fairly good. I mean, I can do a bit of work later on, but I think overall it looks quite pleasing from the front. So the next step is to get the canopy nice looking, a nice umbrella shape. And this will involve the blue scissors. Why do I use the blue scissors? The reason is they're long. I can prune to a nice umbrella shape. If I went in with, you know, individual shears, I'd be pruning and I'd be kind of guessing where my umbrella shape is. This way I can just see at a glance. I can line the scissors up where I'm going to prune and shear it to that shape. The Japanese have a bonsai tool that's similar to this, but it's very expensive. The blue scissors work quite well. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to get my canopy shape, you know, sheared up and then 
I'll go in and I'll look for leaves that are cut in half or move them. Maybe trim some branches back to make it make it look quite pleasing. So here I go. There's the canopy shape now. And here I go with the with the overall pruning. So And there is time for this tree to grow from now until the show. There's still a good month of growing. So you know, even if I had a lot of leaves cut in half, they would, all the new shoots would grow out before the show time. So you can see it's looking better already. Now I'm going to come from behind and do a shear back here. That's looking pretty nice from here. It looks good from the front too. Maybe just a little more off this side here. bit more off the top. Now this this branch that droops down here, uh, let me have a look at it. I think it looks quite good. I think this part of the branch kind of follows the pyramid or the uh, temple and this part kind of flows outwards nicely horizontal making it a nice smooth curve. So I, I don't think I would touch any of that. Maybe just remove some of the lower leaves that are hanging down. There's a shoot hanging down here. But not too much work on it. Yeah, something like that. I, I think, yeah, that's what it needed. Just a, a little bit of a touch up, maybe a leaf off here and one back here, like that. So the deadwood on the back of this tree is really healing nicely. I'll have to show you a close up of it. After that hard pruning, I did get, you know, one trunk line die back. So I'll show you that close-up of the deadwood section at the back of the tree. Let's go in now and have a look. So here it is here. So you can see this is living tissue here, living tissue here. So there's only this, you know, kind of narrow section in the middle that's still deadwood. And eventually that'll callus over and heal that wound in there. So that's exciting that it's healing that quickly going to be a good strong tree in the future. I'll do a little cleanup work on this canopy now so I'm going to take this back to here to an outward facing bud. This one I can prune back to here. Just some fine tuning. Take away some of the older leaves. They're fairly large. They've done their job. Um, that one's okay. This one could be pruned back to here. This one back to here. This one to here. Just making sure all my cut points are fanning outwards. So when the new growth comes in, it's coming in in a nice direction. It's like this one kind of cuts back so I could prune it back to here. Sometimes with pruning, it's not what the tree looks like after the pruning. It's what it looks like after the new growth comes in. That's when it really shows good pruning. You see, you know, all the new growth comes in in good directions, not just growing in a big, you know, dense, all going the wrong directions. If you have pruned it correctly with directional pruning, once it starts growing again, it all still flows out nicely, all the new growth. So 
that's when you tell if you've done a good pruning job. It's not what it looks like immediately after the pruning, but after the new growth starts to come in. Another vertical one I can take out there. Old leaf I can take out here. Yeah, so it's taking a lot of the clutter out of the branches so they're not quite so congested. Take some of these older leaves out. Kind of you know, get some room between the branches for light and air circulation. You don't want your ficus to look like a ball of foliage. You want to be able to see this branch structure in here. You see a lot of ficus and shows in that where it's just a ball of foliage. You know, even looking underneath, you can't really see the branch structure. It's just too dense. So it's better to have it so, you know, you've got your foliage in the right places and you can see the underlying branch structure. Because that's what you're trying to show off with, you know, a ficus is the roots, the trunk, and the primary branch structure. And then you got your foliage kind of out at the tips. Okay, I think, I think that's looking pretty good. It's a good compromise between too dense and too light. Just trying to take an old leaf out here. There. Yeah, I, I think that's good. Once that fills in a bit, should look pretty good for a show. So the next step is the landscaping. Here is a look at the amount of branches and foliage I took off. So not, not a ridiculous amount, but you know, enough. And you can see the tree still has lots of foliage on it. It still looks good. It'll look nice and dense for the show. So my next step is the landscaping. So I'm going to clean it up, weed it, and then start applying moss. And not just to the ground, but also up here in the temple to make it look old and ancient. So liverwort, it's not the worst in the world. You just have to dig it out. And then it takes a bit of soil with it, and then you just have to put some fresh bonsai soil to replace the soil that was stuck to the bottom of the liverwort. And it usually doesn't grow back very quickly. And always remember my rule. If, you, if your bonsai has a lot of weeds on it, then you probably have too many bonsai for the amount of time you have to take care of them. And that's how my collection's getting. I'm getting too many weeds on my trees, which means I have too many bonsai. So I may have to, I don't know, maybe get up earlier in the morning <laughs> and do weeding for an hour every day. There's always a solution. I try and do some weeding when I'm watering. I pull out a lot of my weeds, but liverwort's not something you can just pull out while you're watering. It takes a little more time to manage it. One thing I have found about liverwort is that it holds moisture in your soil really well, better than moss, and it's not too hard to water. If you have a clump of liverwort and you water on top, the water tends to drain right through the liverwort fairly quickly. It doesn't run off the surface of the uh, liverwort like it does with moss. So I found some of my trees with liverwort on it seem to be growing really, really well this year. Uh, better than they ever have, and I think it's because it's holding the moisture in the soil a little better. Especially, you know, in the hot afternoon in the middle of summer, it, it tends to hold moisture in the soil. It's sort of like putting the tinfoil over top of the soil. So, yeah, there are some pluses of liverwort. Over the years, I've tried a lot of different tree-temple-pot combinations, and I had the uh, temple raised up and I kind of extended the temple down when using soil. And I didn't like it, it took away from the tree. It was too much kind of focus on the temple and not enough on the tree. I've tried this larger pot and I'm not really happy with it either. My pot that was a favorite, I had a round terracotta under tray that I developed this planting in. And that was my favorite pot. It kind of was just slightly bigger than the temple and all the emphasis was on the temple and the tree and not on the landscape around it. It really focused your eye to the important details. So I think eventually I'm going to return this planting 
to a round pot or you know a square or rectangular pot that is just a little bigger than the temple so everything's focused on the important details not all the spacious land around it that is just kind of useless and makes everything look small it makes the temple look small and the tree i do have this japanese oval pot i wonder if that would be too big it might be it might look better in something like that kind of offsetting it that might look quite good let me try my smaller one see if that would fit in that here's my smaller oval one that might be okay I don't know if it's big enough to fit the temple in it might be it's certainly long enough but it's just a matter if the temple would fit in here nicely and still have room for the roots a size in between these two would be perfect but this might work it might really focus your attention on the temple and the tree now I like the shallowness of the pot it really suits the planting so that's a possibility I'm thinking I don't like this pot with it. It's just too big, it's too heavy, it's the wrong color. Let me see if I have any other pots that might look better. I have my marble tray. I don't know if that would be, again, too small or not. Let me have a look. So I hold that up so it would be uh, I like the color with it. I really like the color with it. It's definitely long enough. It's almost the same length as this pot. Let's check it widthwise. Uh, I think it's too tight. It is. You, know, you might just get the temple in, in here, but it's certainly not the roots on each side of it. So. Too small I like the color with it though you know white or gray would look really good I have this larger Japanese pot I don't think it's suitable though it's not long enough no it's no good and it's too deep it makes the temple look funny it definitely needs a shallow kind of landscape pot so I think I think my only choices are these two oval ones I have here. My other uh, marble pot is too big. It would look just like this pot, except even heavier. So that, that's no good. I think, I think this one would be too small. I don't think I have the width here. I just don't think I would, I think it'd be a real squeeze. I don't even think it would fit in this pot. So I think, the only possibility for repotting is this large oval one. Uh, I, um, let me have a look at it again. I definitely like, you know, the style of the pot and the height of the pot, and the color is quite nice with it. Especially when I get some moss up on the temple and that. I think it'll look quite good. And it's definitely a better color than this brown. Even though, you know, it's not that much smaller, but it'll look smaller because it's oval. And I think I've got lots of width. Yeah. So I think I'm going to try putting it in this pot. Let me just put this one underneath. right height I would offset it so it's you know as close as to the left hand side as I can get it somewhere there let me get the camera a little lower so you can I get an idea of what it would look like maybe just over a little more so there's an idea of what it would look like um, it's not the perfect pot. I tried to move the camera back so 
gets rid of a little of that perspective because right now the pot looks a little larger than it actually is because it's in front of the planting but it kind of gives you an idea of what it would look like I think it's an improvement but it's certainly not the perfect pot um, I have that cement pot but it's too big it would look good the color but it, it's just too big I'll try it but I'm 99% sure it would look too large and heavy here's a look with the cement pot underneath I love the style of the pot I love the color with it it's just too high it's just too thick it needs to be half that height and it would be the perfect pot but yeah, it just looks massive underneath the tree so it looks like my only option is to that large oval Japanese pot I think it's an improvement over the pot it's in but definitely not not the final pot it could go in I made some good progress on my root over temple ficus tonight I'm going to leave the decision about repotting until tomorrow and I'm going to work on the landscape tomorrow mossing it all up making it look nice so I'll continue on in part two of this series that's all for today I'm Nigel Saunders thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone mm -hmm.